for the truth the girls. Hi everyone. I guess this is a video about autism and genetics and eugenics. Are we ready for a prenatal screening test for autism? A blood test for diagnosing autism is becoming a realistic possibility, but the ethical implications are profound. Well, yes, they are, because obviously what they're talking about here is people having the option to abort babies with autism genes. But could this even be possible? And you know what? I don't think so. Scientists develop genetic tests for autism. They claim they can predict autism with 70% accuracy in people of Central European descent. I would take this with a grain of salt at this point. There's a few reasons why. For one, it's not that simple. The autism spectrum is a huge umbrella term and you may have heard the expression, if you've met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism. Not only that, but now they say new gene studies suggest there are hundreds of kinds of autism. And not surprisingly, so far in genetic research, major autism studies identify dozens of contributing genes. Dozens of genes, hundreds of subtypes. They're pretty far from really understanding autism. In case you don't know, at the core, what it really is, is uh, deficits in social interaction, communication, and differences in interest, as in tending to be extremely hyper-focused on one particular interest. I could use myself in, as an example. I tend to be pretty much focused on one single thing, maybe 90% of the time. Two things, maybe, if you include my topic of obsessional interest plus Sudoku. I mean, that really is fundamentally how I am. How much I'm like that can depend on how much stress I'm under. I mean, the more stress I'm under, the more I, I tend to go to my area of uh, special interest, which is pretty typical for people with ASDs. I, I think that's kind of different from most people. I don't think most people are preoccupied with one single thing or two, like I said, if you include Sudoku, 90% of the time. And, and the third thing is, and the other thing with the interest is you tend to talk about it all the time, which then inf affects your social interaction. Um, also, you tend to over-elaborate on it, which might have something to do with communication. And maybe you don't give a very interesting presentation and you can't really tell when the other person's bored, etc., etc. So they all t kind of tie in together. And the other part is some um, sensory issues, which I have, which you wouldn't be able to tell from a video, but I do a lot. But, there, but within that, <laughs> there's a lot of variation. I mean, you could have someone who is completely unable to talk versus someone who just has some difficulty with nonverbal communication, uh, eye contact, for example. Using myself as an example, I have a lot of trouble with eye contact. Um, you know, and you could have somebody who is interested in just spinning one object all day versus somebody like me who's just preoccupied with one topic 90% of the time, or two if you include Sudoku. Okay, so um, as you see, there's, there's a lot of different shades of ASD and there's a lot of different genetics involved. So realistically, you think they're going to come up with one test and they're going to say, well, your baby is probably going to be autistic, so what are you going to do about it? I don't think so. And the other thing is, um, on the flip side, people with ASDs, and not only people with ASDs, but people with autism spectrum related genes tend to um, have certain gifts, including higher intelligence. People with the genes related to the condition scored better in mental ability tests. Of note, they tested only people who have the genes, but not the condition, which I think is kind of unfair because there's a reason why they say keep calm and ask an Aspie. A lot of them would probably do pretty well on those tests of mental ability, uh, but I guess because it's such a wide spectrum, they, they had to just cut it off as either your NT or your ASD, and so we'll just include the NT people. But in any case, the genes are related to high intelligence. You know what's really interesting? I got the book from Rudy Simone, um, Asper Girls, although I got it in French, L'Asperger au Féminin. And uh, one thing they talk about there is fluid intelligence and that people with Asperger's tend to have higher fluid intelligence, which means the ability to look at a lot of seemingly unrelated things and um, connect them. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's, I guess it comes with some, some benefits and some liabilities. But uh, what are you going to do now? Make this test, find people with autism genes, it's probably a lot of them, and abort them, and you're probably just going to be aborting a lot of potentially 
you know, highly intelligent people who have a lot to contribute to society. And then there's the whole nature versus nurture debate. There was a study uh, that said autism was linked to the environment. So this study says the increase in diagnosis is not due to increased diagnostic sensitivity. Although I think some of it is, maybe on the what you call the higher functioning end, not on the like re regressive, more severe end. I don't really like to use those terms because you never know what's going on underneath with the person. They could look pretty severe on the outside and be absolutely brilliant on the inside, but that's the term that they use. Some say it's it's uh, it's not due to it can't be due to genetics, and then another study comes along and says environment and genetics may contribute equally to the risk, and then another study comes along and says well that study wasn't very good, <laughs> and then the next twin study comes out and says genetics are the main cause of autism, must be those more than one hundred genes that were implicated. But they are spontaneous mutations, not something inherited. So you kind of have to wonder, what is causing the spontaneous mutations? Maybe it's environment. Oh, uh, maybe it's cell phones. Oh, flame retardant. No, wait, it's ultrasounds. So, like, nobody's going to figure it out, really, because, like, the, the earlier links that I showed you said, hundreds of subtypes, dozens of genes, probably an interaction between a lot of things. I'll give you my personal opinion here. I think there's a lot of genetics involved, obviously. Um, but it's such an umbrella term that you cannot pinpoint and say it's this or it's that. Like I said, each person is totally unique. And I think that maybe what's happening is that some people who are damaged by vaccines, um, autoimmune reactions to viruses, other environmental things, because their behaviors fit the ASD diagnosis, they're just diagnosed as ASD, but you're not looking at what really happened underneath. I mean, there have been dozens of cases who've been compensated uh, by the vaccine courts for having brain damage with autism-like symptoms. So, you know, it's just the wording sometimes. On the other hand, like if I look at myself, I'd have to say, no, I don't think I was damaged by a vaccine. I just have a certain type of mind. That's pretty different from... I think a lot of people, like in one respect is when it comes to imagination, controlled versus spontaneous. Like I really don't have very much of what you call spontaneous imagination. And possibly I think what you would call like a social imagination. Um, I don't engage in any kind of fantasizing really. I think that's a big part probably of what most people's life experience is, a lot of imagination, fantasy. And I think that there's a whole layer to socializing that other people experience that I just don't. Um, I don't think that's because of a vaccine. So the reason I was making this video in the first place was to address the issue of prenatal testing uh, for ASD and uh, the idea that people would want to abort children who, who have genes that could indicate that they could be autistic. And obviously this is a very, very bad idea. And, and it's probably not feasible and if you look at it in the context of all this it seems kind of ridiculous so it's not something that I would really worry about I think maybe there's some eugenicists out there I know there are some eugenicists out there who would like to do this but I get a certain satisfaction from knowing that probably they never will be able to because it's really not that simple so let me know what you think and, uh, oh, thanks for giving this video a thumbs up. And thanks for listening to me, and I'll see you next time.